I wanted to take some time and just, uh, I've done something like this before, talking about those little points, but uh, I don't think I've done it here. So You're still not allowed to fall asleep, Kane. Sorry. <laughs> so, yeah. He told me he was going to fall asleep earlier. So, uh, But I wanted to talk about some of the little things and more about, especially about little animals. Um, and we can all turn to Proverbs 30 real quick. Um, so Proverbs 30, starting in, uh, verse 24, this is, uh, King Agur, and he says, there be four things which are little upon the earth, but they are exceedingly wise. The ants are a people not yet strong, yet they are, they prepare their meat in the summer. The coonies are but a feeble folk, yet they make their houses in the rocks. The locusts have no king, yet they go forth, all of them by their bands, and the spider taketh hold with her hands, and is in king's palaces. Um, and I want to just go over these four little animals and the wisdom that they show. And they show King Agur here, and they can show us wisdom when we take these lessons and that these little animals teach us and apply them to our lives. And we'll start, obviously, with the ants. And I know ants are resilient. Like it says, there are people not strong, yet they prepare their meat in the summer. I, this just came to me, but yesterday uh, the AC broke in the truck. And so I go to um, fix the AC, and I'm trying to just turn dials and see what's working or whatnot. And uh, the front's not working, the front AC. I go to check the back AC, and uh, I lift up the carpet, and there's just a pile of ants there. I have no idea how they got in the truck or what they're doing there. Um, so I had to vacuum them up. But they're preparing their meat, apparently, because that's what ants do, <laughs> like this verse says. But they're small. I could vacuum them up, you know, they were easy to dispose of. Uh, they didn't really try to bite me or anything. They're weak. They're not strong. Um, but it's their, basically their uh, mentality that makes them wise. It's their ability to keep plugging away, their ability to see that something's coming and prepare for it, which is what we do. You know, we see the coming of Christ coming and, uh, and we prepare for it. We strengthen ourselves. We get our meat ready. We we wait. Or we wait on the Lord. We we trust in Him for that coming, or for that test. Not even that. It's just for those tribulations, for those times that we uh, um, are troubled. Uh, and John four thirty one. We can turn there real quick. Hold your place if you want to flip back and forth to Proverbs. There, I'll just be reading the, the couple of verses. But John four thirty one. says, In the meanwhile his disciples prayed him, saying, Master, eat. But he said unto them, I have meat to eat that ye know not of. Therefore he said to said therefore said the disciples to one another, Hath any man brought him aught to eat? And Jesus saith unto them, My meat is to do the will of him that sent me, and to finish his work. Say say not ye that there are four months and then cometh harvest. Behold, I say unto you, lift up your eyes and look on the fields, for they are white already to harvest. You know, the ants do the same thing. They don't wait. They they just keep going, plugging away, doing their thing for the winter, for, for the harvest. And uh, and that's what Jesus is telling them here. Prepare yourselves. And he says your meat is not food. It's not the necessities that you need, that your fleshly self needs. It is the will of God. It's finishing his work. It's doing his will. That's the meat. And that's really what strengthens us, what gives us the... Uh, the ability to even conquer this fleshly world, to overcome sin, is having that meat ready and gathering it and being prepared with that meat, with the will of God. It feeds our Holy Spirit, um, so we don't become mal malnutritioned, we don't become dehydrated, um, when, when we take part of that spiritual bread in Christ. Um, Matthew 24 
44, I'll just read that real quick. Therefore be ye also ready, for in such an hour as ye think not the Son of Man cometh, therefore be ye also ready, for in such an hour as ye think not the Son of Man cometh. Okay, I was reading that like there was something else after it, but that's all I'm reading. <laughs> um, you know, and, and in First Thessalonians it says, quench not the Spirit. You know, we're supposed to prepare ourselves for Christ, for his coming, for the hard times, for the trouble. That we do that by reading the scriptures, preparing ourselves, eating this bread right here, this and reading this word. Um, now to go on to the next, uh, the next small animal. The coonies are but a feeble folk, yet they make their houses in rocks. Coonies are called rock rabbits or rock hyraxes. They live in Africa and the Middle East area, and they're basically a little bit bigger than a guinea pig, except for they are a lot more stout than a guinea pig would be, probably like a prairie dog or gopher kind of thing. Um, they, um, and they're a little bit more stout than a rabbit too. You know, they're not, they're not huge animals. They are small. They do get preyed on by, uh, let me see, wild dogs, eagles, cobras, puff adders, and leopards. So, I mean, they're not built for defense or anything, but, um, they're small, but their wisdom is in their defense, and their defense isn't not to try to come up with their own. It is to use what's there and use rocks. Our rock, obviously, is Jesus Christ. That's where we go to, uh, to save ourselves for our defense, to be taken care of. Uh, Psalm 71, 1 says, in thee, O Lord, do I put my trust. Let me never be put to confusion. Deliver me in thy righteousness and cause me to escape. Incline thine ear unto me and save me. Be thou my strong habitation, whereunto I may continually resort. Thou hast given commandment to save me, for thou art my rock and my fortress. It's the same thing we're doing here. When we go to Jesus Christ, we dive down into the rock. We wait for it, for the trouble to pass over for the trouble to leave, and we can come out when it's clear, once, we, uh, once it's safe. And he's there for us when we need him. It's all about that trust. Luke 6, uh, we can turn there real quick, 47. Uh, 647, a parable we all know. Everyone who comes to me and hears my words and does them, I will show you who he is like. So anyone that does what the ant does, comes and follows me and does what I say and, and everything, I will show you what he's like. He is like a man building a house who dug and went deep and laid a foundation on the rock. And when the flood arose, the stream broke out against the house and could not shake it because it was founded on the rock. But he, he who hears and doesn't do is like a man who built a house on the earth without a foundation against which the steam broke through, stream broke through, and immediately it fell, and the ruin of that house was great. So when you prepare yourself and you learn to trust in God, you have that foundation. You have when those troubles come, when that tribulation comes, we can rest assured that we're not being taken away by the floodwaters. We've got... A strong footing you know one thing about a rock too is it is solid you know if you try to push something on gravel or sand or even grass you tend to slip on a rock it's solid um, it has little edges typically too so you can push against things if they're coming your way when you're trying to do something and be productive so you want to be on that rock not on sand not on not on gravel not on uh, on grass either one thing, too, I, this is just a little point. I like the, the analogy of Christ, Christ as a rock because rocks you can't change. You can chip away at them, but then they're not quite the same rock. But they're not malleable. You can't put them in a mold and, and reform them or reshape them. They're not like us. They're not clay, obviously. They're, they're solid. The only thing you can try to do is, is to break it, but then you don't have that same rock. And it's not as strong, it's not as big, and it's not as uh, sturdy. Uh, we'll go on to the next little animal. The locusts have no king, yet they go forth, all of them, by bands. 
Apparently, I was looking up locusts a little bit this morning. Locusts are actually solitary creatures. But uh, when they get into a high concentration, they tend to want to gather. So they're solitary. They want to stay away. But when it gets to like a certain point, they're like, all right, there's too much of us. I guess we need to be together. <laughs> it's, it's slightly interesting. And that's when they begin their, their march, their bands. Um, and they just go. And this is something like we should be together, wanting to be with each other. If one locust goes out, I believe it said the sounds of the other locust brings it back in. It, it comes back in. And they go and they march with no king. And we don't have that king right now physically present with us. We have that king, that spirit in us. And we need to move with that same spirit all together, all one, just like the locusts do. You know, you look at locusts too, like a, a plague coming, and it's like a solid wall almost. And if you, there's no good, no sense in having this foundation if your walls don't stand either. So we need to work on making strong walls, making a solid, distinct area, shape, togetherness. Second uh, Corinthians 12, 18 says, I desired Titus, and with him I sent a brother. Did Titus make a gain of you? Walked we not in the same spirit? Walked we not in the same steps? And that's just showing we're together. We're in the same thing. We're, we're doing this together. Uh, again, in 1 Corinthians 14, 3, 33, For God is not the author of confusion, but of peace, as in all churches of the saints. We all have these small differences. We all have these small little tendencies or, or whatnot. But we, we learn to work with each other and for the peace not confusion we don't we don't work over here one person over here doing this thinking he's doing something and someone works over here doing something else because they don't agree on something that we come together all because of that spirit once again that spirit brings us together John 13 35 by this shall all men know that you are my disciples if you have love one one to another it's that same mentality. It's that same spirit that brings us together. And 1 Peter 3.18. Finally, be ye all of one mind, having compassion one of another, love as brethren, be pitiful, be courteous, not rendering evil for evil or railing for railing, but contrarywise, blessing, knowing that ye are thereunto called that ye should inherit a blessing. Just as the Sabbath is a sign that our, our works match up to what is in this Bible, in this word. Our love is a, so a sign that this word is in us, that, that we have it. Just like Christ says, people will know you are my disciple if you love, if you are of one mind, if you move like the locusts, if you are together. That last verse, too, in, uh, in Peter, in 3.9, it says... Uh, at the end, it says that you should inherit a blessing, and that is the uh, the last the last little animal we're talking about too. Um, in Proverbs thirty twenty eight, the spider taketh hold with her hands and is in kings' palaces. This is kind of different. I found different translations for this. Um, one taking it with the spider, a spider makes a web, fashions a web, and that's what it means with take takes hold with her hands. It takes and makes a web, makes its own house, and it's in palaces. And, it, and, the, and, and it's in palaces kind of shows that you can't get rid of it because you would expect like a spider in a poor person's house because someone's not aggressively cleaning or making sure it looks polished and all. But finding it in a king's house is somewhat even rarer, and you, can't, you shouldn't see them there because it is something that's upkept. It is something that's maintained, but you can't get rid of the spiders in that. Another one is uh, you can catch a lizard with your hands, but it's still found in king's palaces. Same kind of concept. A lizard, you're not going to get rid of these little lizards. You know, everybody finds little lizards. Kelsey lived on Guam, and they said it was like a constant thing, geckos in the house and all. Because um, when they're present, they're there, and they can be found in king's palaces, even though they're easy to catch and, and toss out. 
But either way, um, it works, depending on whatever translation you use. And that's the kind of attitude we need to have. We've found something good. We've found a shelter. We've found meat. And we've found a community. And we need to strive to hold on to that, to hold on to that little piece of the kingdom that we can have now here. Matthew 13, 44. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto treasure hid in a field, the which when a man hath found, he hideth, and for joy thereof goeth and selleth all that he hath and buyeth that field. This guy gives up everything he has, everything he owns, to get back into, to get that kingdom, to find that treasure. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a merchant man seeking goodly pearls, who, when he hath found one pearl of great price, went and sold all that he had and bought it. Sell everything you have and buy you, buy you field and sell everything you have. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm not reading a verse there. I'm reading my ones. I had them too close together. <laughs> uh, who, when he had found one pearl of great price, went and sold all that he had and bought it. So sell all that you have. Hold on to this, uh, to what the spider does, you know. It doesn't get kicked out doesn't get thrown out and then stop trying to get in it keeps getting in the same spider the same lizard you can't you can't get rid of them and that's because the spider knows where he wants to be the spider and the lizard want to be in the king's palace they want to be in the kingdom and we need to have that same gusto that same fire in us you know sometimes we sin and we start to doubt ourselves we don't think ourselves worthy um, you know, I was reading a little bit of David this week and, you know, God tells him, I'm going to make, a, you know, my kingdom is going to be set up in you. You're going to, your sons are going to rule. And David, you know, his first question is, who am I that you, God, you know, are going to bless my house like this? And it's something we always ask. We always think, who are we? Um, we're nothing but a little lizard, something that, you know, is easy to throw out, but we need to remember that that mercy is there for us and that, you know, he's chosen us. He's picked us. And John 10, 27, you can turn there real quick. It says, my sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. I give eternal life to them and they will never perish and no one will snatch them out of my hand. My Father, who has given them to me, is greater than all. No one is able to snatch them out of my Father's hand. I and the Father are one. Once again, you, you can't be taken out of the kingdom. Only God is going to kick you out of the kingdom. You are the only one that can upset this for yourself. You push forward. We, we have to be found in that kingdom and find it something of value. Go and sell everything we have to be part of that. And you see, he brings in the, the locust mentality again. He says, I and the Father are one. We're one spirit. We're one, we're one being, and we move together, just like the locusts do. Going back with the in the kingdom, uh, Revelations 3.11, Behold, I come quickly, hold that fast which thou hast, that no man take thy crown. Hold fast to it, don't let go. Be found in that palace. Him that overcometh will I make a pillar in the tent, in the temple of my God, and he shall go no more out, and I will write upon him the name of my God and the name of the city of my God, which is in New Jerusalem, which cometh down out of heaven from my God, and I will write upon him my new name. So you go from being someone that could be removed from the, from the palace, from the kingdom, to someone that's part of it, a pillar, someone that helps support it, someone that helps, helps build it, helps... Uh, you know, support it. <laughs> um, and that's what we're called for. That's why we're in this kingdom now, this little piece of kingdom that we have. That's why we have this spirit, as we're called for this, to be part of it, to be part of that kingdom, to overcome the world. You probably talk a lot more about all these uh, little animals, maybe a little bit more in depth and all. I just kind of wanted to hit them real quick and all. But none of these animals have a glamorous life. It seems like they're all waiting for something to catch them or eat them or 
uh, step on their anthill, you know. They, they don't have a glamorous life, but they're wise, and they stick to what they know. The ants, they gather things. They, uh, they prepare their meat for times of trouble. And the coonies, they stay in that rock. They know where the, where the safeness is, where they can find uh, hospitality, and where they can find a strong habitation. And the locusts, they just know to stick together. They know we got to follow each other, find out where this food is, and eat. You know, locusts, they also move kind of like hopping over each other. The ones from the back move to the front, and they start eating and forage, uh, foraging. And then the other locusts from the back, because the food's all eaten up, they move forward. So it's this constant shift and forward of the animals. And then you have some that hop on the ground, actually, and some that fly. Not all of them fly, um, as you would think. But each of these, and then the lizards, they just know where to be. They just want to be found there. They just want to be in there. Um, and you can see where these animals have their wisdom and how we can apply the, that wisdom to our lives. I find it interesting, too, that the majority of these creatures have a support group. They have other ants. You have other hyraxes, other rock, uh, uh, rock rabbits, and you have other locusts. You have other things there. The only thing that's by itself is a lizard. Typically, you find that by itself, or a spider. Um, and that's because when it comes down to it, salvation is yours. It's yours for the taking. Like uh, you know, Christ said there, I've called my sheep. No one's going to take them away from me. No one. And it's, it's up to us to make sure that we're found there, that we're found there at that time of salvation <laughs> with the rest of our group here, with with everyone. So I want everybody to prepare yourself. Prepare yourself on the rock. Prepare yourself on the rock with each other in God's spirit. Prepare yourself on the rock with each other in God's spirit and never stop until we reach the kingdom. <laughs>